Well, everyone, welcome to this regular board meeting of the Industrial Development Authority on October 10th, 2024, at present time, 135. Roll call, please. Director King? Present. Director Neal? Present. Director Seward? Here. Director Zarelli? Present. And President Reed? Here. Seeing that we have a quorum, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Item one, the approval of the minutes from the September 12th meeting. Any questions or corrections? Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And second. Roll call, please. Director King? Aye. Director Neal? Aye. Director Seward? Aye. Director Zarelli? Aye. And President Reed? Aye. Item one on the agenda, resolution 24 IDA 13, the Old North East, the Old North Park East Apartments. Michelle, you're on. Thank you. And this is for the final approval in an issuance resolution for multifamily housing revenue bonds in an amount up to 7.5 million to finance a portion of the costs of the acquisition and rehabilitation of 59 multifamily housing units in a 22 scattered site in 22 scattered site buildings. The total project cost is 10.4 million. There is additional public assistance in the form of LIHTC and historic tax credits. SLDC has received a letter of support from Alderman Browning for this project. The developer's Old North Park East developer. The borrower will be Old North Park East Limited Partnership. The property manager is Hayes Gibson Property Services. Bond counsel is Waylon Watson, and the bonds will be privately placed with Enterprise Bank and Trust. Um, the addresses of the properties affected are listed in the memo, and they are located in the Forest Park Southeast and Old North St. Louis neighborhoods. They will offer a mix of one, two, three, and four bedroom units restricted to households earning less than 60% of the AMI. Buildings and units require significant renovations to remain marketable and ensure a quality, affordable rental housing remains available in these neighborhoods. They are currently about 40% occupied in anticipation of the renovations. Uh, the work will be completed on a unit by unit basis with all work done as needed. Oh. Selective floor replacement will include vinyl tile kitchen Vinyl tile in kitchens and bathrooms, restored or replaced hardwood floors in living areas and carpet in bedrooms. Kitchen cabinets, countertops, and appliances will be replaced, as well as tub surrounds. New roof, hot water heaters, and HVAC will also be, be installed in buildings that have not been updated. Exterior work will include a new roofing membrane, tuck pointing of all masonry, repairs to the front building canopy, a new concrete walkway, and the replacement of windows and exterior doors. And there will be added community amenities as well. And so this resolution was brought before the board for um, the initial approval. And this is now the request for the final approval. And there are representatives here if there are any additional questions. Any questions from the board members? I have a couple. Um, have we ever had um, come before this board uh, scattered properties under the same developer or uh, one developer? And then how is the priority given to those uh, properties? And what's the time frame and who technically is responsible to complete that project or follow up on completion of that project? Well, this is Quaylen Watson. We're bond counsel on the transaction to the IDA. I can say yes, scattered site projects have come before this board before. In fact, this particular developer has done a few of them with uh, the St. Louis City IDA. Uh, in terms of the balance of your questions, I would have to defer to representatives from the uh, development team and they are on with us today at Mark or Kate, if one of you maybe could address those questions. Sure. No. So uh, can you hear me? Sorry, yes. I, I was fumbling yes. from my mute button. 
So it, this is a, a, a development from RISE Community Development, and this is, a, uh, quite honestly, a typical project profile for us. So we have guarantee obligation both to the lender and to the investor to get the project finished. We're working with architects and general contractors that we've worked with for over 25 years. E.M. Harris will be the general contractor. Um, Cortan is the architect. And this is a project we've been working to close without exaggeration for, for almost three years, just working through various sort of changes in interest rate environment and other things that have um, have forced us to kind of get the project drug out. But once it starts, construction will start immediately and we hope to be done between 15 and 17 months. I, as Michelle mentioned, it'll be sort of a rolling rehab. So the buildings will be finished, placed in service and then leased and then we'll keep, we'll keep going from there. Okay, thank you. And you're still currently uh, running 40% uh, occupancy? No, it's less than that now. It's, uh, it's probably closer to maybe 30%. Um, you know, we've been trying to close this for, we'd hope to close it back in April um, after being delayed at the end of last year. And we're in a position where we're just not leasing units. So as soon as the project is closed and construction starts, um, then we will start to rotate those families into newly rehabbed units and then start leasing units, um, you know, kind of units behind them with marketing that'll be done by us and with our, man our property manager. The other questions? From the board. Well, hearing none, would there be a motion to approve IDA so uh, moved. 24, IDA 13? So moved by Director King. I'll second. second. Shoot. Yes. Roll call, please. Director Fall? Yes. Director King? Aye. Director Neal? Aye. Director Seward? Aye. Director Zarelli? Aye. And President Reed? Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. Good luck. Item next is uh, 24 IDA 14, the Science Center Project. Michelle? Thank you. This is also for final approval and is an issuance resolution for public facilities revenue bonds in an amount up to $6 million to refund the series 2014A and 2014B bonds and to pay the cost of issuance of the sale of the series 24, 2024 bonds. Uh, this is for the Science Center, 5050 Oakland Avenue. Total project cost is $6 million. The borrower is the St. Louis Science Center Foundation, which is 501c3 nonprofit. Mark Grimm of Gilmore and Bell is bond counsel, and the bonds will be privately placed with Clayton Holdings LLC, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Commerce Bank. And the city IDA had previously issued bonds for the St. Louis Science Center project in 1999, 2005, and again in 2014. Bond proceeds totaling approximately 20.5 million funded several activities on the campus, which include renovation of the McDonald Planetarium, the acquisition of an existing building on Macklin Avenue, and the conversion for use of the Science Center, and demolition of the former Explore dorm exhibition space and construction of a permanent exhibit hall. The Science Center is a sub-district of the Metropolitan Zoological Park and Museum District and the associated si St. Louis Science Center Foundation have a mission to the St. Louis region of igniting and sustaining long, lifelong science and technology learning. The role of the foundation is to provide fundraising and development financing assistance to supplement the tax revenue and operating income of the Science Center. The refinancing of the 2014 bonds is a result in part of the expiration of the original purchaser's 10-year agreement to hold the bonds. The purchaser at that time was U.S. Bank. And we do have representatives of the Science Center here, as well as Mark Grimm of Gilmore Bell. Are there any questions? Any questions from the board? The representatives of the uh, Planetarium uh, Science Center wish to add anything? Not at this time, no. Would there be a motion to uh, provide final approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. 
Roll call, please. Director Fall. Yes. Director King. Aye. Director Neal. Aye. Director Seward. Aye. Director Zarelli. And President Reed. Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Item next, uh, resolution 24, IDA 15, the Lafayette Apartments. The gate is. Michelle, it's hard for me to find that place. It's tucked away <laughs> pretty good. Thank you. So this is for the Lafayette Preservation Project. This is the initial approval and the inducement resolution for multifamily housing revenue bonds, which means it will be brought back to the board for final approval at a later time. Bond amount is up to $34.1 million, and the funds will be used to finance a portion of the cost of the acquisition and rehabilitation of a 162-unit multifamily housing development. Total project cost is $52.7 million. There is additional public assistance in the form of both federal and state low-income housing tax credits. An application has been submitted for tax abatement and is currently in the review process. SLDC has received a letter of support from Alderwoman Sonier. The developer is Lafayette Developer LLC and the borrower is Lafayette Preservation LLC. The property manager will be the Sandstone Group. Waylon Watson of Gilmore and Bell is bond counsel and the bonds will be privately placed with Ready Capital in Midwest Regional Capital Bank or one or more other banks and or financial institutions to be identified. This project involves the rehabilitation of two adjacent properties, Lafayette Senior Apartments and Lafayette Family Apartments. Lafayette Preservation is located at 1420 Ohio and scattered sites on Caroline, Ohio and Rutgers Streets in the Gate District. The 162 units serve low-income households, and they were originally constructed in 1977, and a large percentage of the building systems are nearing the end of their useful life and are in very poor condition. Lafayette Senior is a three-story elevated elevator-served complex for seniors 55-plus and consists of 100-bedroom units. 101 bedroom units. Lafayette Family is a townhouse style development with 62 units with eight two bedroom units, 43 three bedroom units, and 11 four bedroom units for larger families. This project has a combined residential square footage of 128,510 square feet and a total square footage of 130,335 square feet. After rehabilitation, Lafayette Senior will continue to serve low and moderate income senior households, and Lafayette Family will continue to serve low and moderate income families. Both properties target groups earning less than 60% of the AMI, and there will be 25 units, 15 at senior and 10 at family, that will be set aside for households earning less than 30% of AMI. Development team has received a low-income housing tax credit award for similar rehabilitation of the Hickory townhouses. An application and presentation to the IDA board will occur at the November meeting. All three of these properties, Lafayette Senior, Lafayette Family, and Hickory townhouses will be managed together, sharing community space and resident services. It will have sustainability as a key aspect. They've received awards through HUD's green and resilient retrofit program to incorporate green and sustainable investments. These include new LED light fixtures, water sense kitchen and bath fixtures, new Energy Star 7.0 rated windows, replacement of Lafayette Seniors gas water heaters with new efficient electric heat pumps, conversion of Lafayette families gas ranges and cooktops to electric and a water usage monitoring system. A new community building will include a new central property management office, business center for free Wi-Fi, and community space for service, services and activities. First floor of Lafayette Senior will also have a new business center with free Wi-Fi for residents, fitness center, and additional community space. There will be a new playground and splash pad at the family property. Residents will also have access to a service coordinator who will have experience connecting low-income residents with health, mental health, employment, education, and other community-based services. And we do have representatives of the developer here, as well as Waylon Watson as bond counsel if there are questions. 
Any questions from the board? Are you still running at about 60% uh, occupancy? So the properties are about 75% occupied currently. So you're probably going to do a leapfrog method to... Uh... Yeah, the point is, so we'll we'll rehab the vacant units first and move tenants into those units and then continue on throughout the floors and buildings. Uh, so hopefully tenants, for the most part, will only have to move once into a fully rehabbed unit. What's the estimated time frame to finish the project? Uh, approximately 18 months, and we're going to do them, uh, run them at the same time. Uh, the senior and the family. And so hopefully that saves some time in the family since it's smaller should be finished um, a little bit quicker than that, but about 18 months is our plan. Thank you. Do you have a contractor yet? Yes, it's Ian Harris. Any further questions from the board? No, I was president of the Soulard Housing Corporation. We use Mike Harris too, so he's he's well known to me. Would there be a motion for preliminary approval? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Director Fall? Yes. Director King? Aye. Director Neal? Aye. Director Seward? Aye. Director Zarelli and President Reed. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Is uh do we have a uh, financials? Uh, no, oh, nothing new Chris. on the finances. The, the this is Chris. Um, the only um the only activities we earn uh, a little bit of interest under a hundred dollars on the, the account this month. Um, and that's that's it. Director King, did you have a question for Chris? I did not, not this time. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We are adjourned at 10 minutes to two. Not quite a right. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Thank you. Thank you.